You probably know that everything around you is made up of tiny particles called atoms. The simplified model of an atom has a positively charged center called the nucleus and you have negatively charged electrons orbiting around it. The terms positively charged and negatively charged are arbitrary and the important thing to know is that things with opposite charges attract each other and things with the same charge repel each other. So, the positive nucleus of the atom will attract negative electrons, but if electrons get too close to each other they will push each other away. In most solid materials the atoms and their electrons just sit there and don't move around. But in metals like copper, the electrons can move around. The positive nuclei stay in the same place, preserving the structure of the metal, but the electrons can drift around from atom to atom to atom. But since the negatively charged electrons repel each other, when you move one electron from atom to atom, you will also move other electrons from atom to atom. And that's basically what the flow of electricity is. When electrons are flowing through something, you can say that electric current is flowing. Now how do we measure electric current? Well, you've probably heard of the term amp, which is short for ampere. An ampere refers to the number of electrons that are flowing per second through something that conducts electricity. One ampere is equivalent to 6.24 x 1018 electrons flowing per second. And one ampere means that a lot of electrons are flowing. Okay, now is the perfect time to talk about electric circuits. An electric circuit is a closed loop where current can flow around. In this example of a flashlight, electrons can flow from the battery, through the copper wire, through the light, and through another piece of wire to the other side of the battery. Now, remember, when current is flowing here all the electrons are moving at the same time. Over here the negative terminal of the battery is pushing the negative electrons away. And those electrons are pushing other electrons away. And this keeps happening throughout the circuit. Allowing energy to be transferred from the battery to the light. But if you were to cut one of the wires here you would no longer have a complete circuit. The electrons can't just jump through the air from one wire to another. So, if electrons can't push each other around in a complete loop, no current can flow. When there's no current flowing, there can't be any transfer of energy, so the light stays off. And this is how electric switches work. The switch has two pieces of metal inside it. When the pieces of metal touch, you get a complete circuit, and the light turns on. When the pieces of metal are pulled apart it becomes an open circuit and the light turns off. This is also how fuses work. Right now, I have 5 amperes flowing through this fuse which is rated for 15 amperes. But when I suddenly draw 30 amperes, the fuse melts, opens the circuit and prevents any current from flowing until the fuse is replaced. Now there's one more tricky thing about the electric current that most people don't know. The reality is the actual flow of electrons goes from negative to positive. Not from, not from positive to negative. You can just pretend that electrons are moving from positive to negative even though that's backward to reality. The good news is that the formulas are consistent and whenever we do any math in electrical engineering, we use the system from positive to negative and it works. The video is designed by Electronic Bow, like this video, takes much time to make it, to keep making like this video, please do not forget to support us, like, and best comment, and of course share it with your friends.